Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to the Indiana State Police Roadshow. I'm your host, Sergeant John Perrine, the Indiana State Police Public Information Office from the Indianapolis District. The Roadshow is brought to you each week by the Indiana State Police Alliance and Cops for Kids, a subsidiary of the State Police Alliance. For more information about our sponsor, you can visit them at www.indianasfinest.com. Very, very excited about uh, the guests that are in show, in studio today uh, from the Indiana Department of Corrections. Uh, we have the Director of Community Engagement, Rick Rosales. Rick's been on a couple times. Thanks for coming yes, again. Thanks for having and, me. And one of his wonderful volunteers that, that heads up a, a great program uh, in the Indiana uh, prisons is Deborah Devines. Uh, she's the founder of the Indiana Prison Writers Workshop. So Welcome. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for having us. So, so Deborah, let's let's start with an overview of your program. Sure. What what do you what is it that you do? Right. So, Indiana Prison Writers Workshop brings creative writing instruction into some of the facilities. Uh, we have a twelve week curriculum that includes several writing prompts, fifteen minute writing prompts that we've selected, and we uh, introduce the men to different literary greats like Langston Hughes, Maya Angelou, and Mark Twain, and then we talk about those. Um, and so it really is learning how to express yourself, uh, how to craft your own story, and how to build self-confidence because the offenders do share their stories that they write in class. Wow. And so what what made you think about this and start this, and, and how long have you done it? Right. So um, I initially volunteered uh, to facilitate the victim impact class at one of the facilities, just interested in giving back and volunteering. Uh, why? Because I was a former journalist, a former TV news reporter for about a decade, and I covered crime in courts. And so I was always interested in, quote unquote, the rest of the story, right? Mm-hmm. So I was embedded with law enforcement telling uh, the crime story, but uh, and what were some of the the barriers that these offenders faced growing up. And so that introduced me um, into the world of uh, the correctional uh, institutions and I, when I was working at a homeless veterans nonprofit here in town, one of the case managers, her husband worked at a facility and said, they're always looking for volunteers. And so that's what led me into one of the facilities for the victim impact class. And then I, I basically um, suggested that they write uh, during that time. Um, and they did. And I discovered that there was a lot of talent in the room and approached uh, via email the volunteer coordinator at that facility and said, I'd love to create uh, or develop a creative writing workshop Mm -hmm. and she said great she said put together a curriculum and we'll send it up uh, to the higher ups in the facility and that was approved and said about really building this program and later incorporated it into a 501 c3 and now have a team of volunteers in multiple facilities so rick talk about because this people might find it intriguing that you even rely so much on volunteers in our prison systems, you know. Uh, but I think uh, I, I've heard it from several people in, in your uh agency says it's the department of corrections not the department of incarceration and and this is part of that correction process yes absolutely so uh we have uh, almost 4,500 volunteers that that support our facilities throughout the state our 21 facilities and we rely heavily on them to provide this type of programming and other types uh to to support that whole rehabilitative model and we want to return successful citizens and i think all the hoosiers out there do as well so when when she came to me with this idea this creative writing idea um Mm -hmm. and and knowing the impact that it would make, I, I knew it would, it would find a great home in, in, in multiple facilities. Um, our commissioner is also a very big fan of creative writing and the impact it makes. And so this was a great tie-in and, and the results that she's seen from from her writers throughout the different facilities it really speaks for itself. So talk about how impressed you've been with some of the people that maybe just surprised you, or just shocked what their ability. I right. Mean, what, Com- what you- completely impressed. Um, we have pre and post evaluations to gauge what they're getting out of the workshop. And a few quotes, um, very brief. One per, one offender said, having a group of people listen to your inner thoughts has helped build my self-confidence. Uh, someone else commented, having a safe environment allowed me to open up old doors and, and share what I had buried inside. Um, so it's about self-discovery. And, and that's what they're finding. We know that Research shows that arts programming inside correctional facilities uh, is great. And for them to feel that they're being held accountable 
for certain assignments and challenged uh, is huge. And Rick said it well. Um, the Indiana Department of Correction Commissioner Rob Carter hats off to him and his entire staff for seeing the value. Um, Indiana uh, is really a, a trailblazer and and embracing so many programs. And I know we're talking about creative writing, but also hats go off to those with the Last Mile program, Shakespeare at Pendleton. There's so many um, arts and writing programs um, that you know that that come through these doors, and so. To those volunteers who give of their time, you know, I definitely encourage you to to f- to embark on this journey and to, to feel rewarded and, and give back in this way. You know, and, and I, I would speculate to believe that this isn't just making them better writers. It's making them better communicators. Right. And you're probably getting the feedback That's right. uh, from the people that they're with every day and from their families, their friends that, wow, you know. That this is really something that we've never seen before. Exactly. You're right. It trickles down to, to families. So there we do have one session on cover letter writing um, because telling a good story, a poem or, or short story um, translates into selling yourself and telling your unique story through cover letter writing. And so it's those skills that that's building um, not just themselves, mm-hmm. but it's improving how they communicate with others as they get out and whether they're, you know, working, um, you know, as as a CEO or as a factory employee to be able to communicate um, through memos and just interaction will help help them. Of course. And, and Rick said it well, rehabilitation um, is, 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 is key. And that's what Indiana Department of Correction is doing and they're doing it so well. And, and I can just imagine as a, uh, you know, this person for the first time in many years sitting down and pinning a letter to a family member mm-hmm. And that family member receiving that and just saying, wow, where did this right. come from? Exactly. And and I, that's got to be so rewarding for you. It is extremely rewarding um, for, for not only me, but the volunteer facilitators who work, work work with them at the facilities is just to see their growth and to, like I said, to challenge them and hold them accountable. I think we all need someone, you know, in our corner to, to root for us mm-hmm. and to push us. Um, for myself, you know, I'm, I, I didn't have that growing up. I had to push myself um, and so uh, I think to, to, for, for everybody in life to find someone who, who sort of believes in you. Right, and, and maybe for the you. first time in a long time, somebody is believing in them mm-hmm. and, and encouraging them and, and pursuing, mm-hmm. helping them pursue something they enjoy. So, exactly. So Rick, tell me how this carries over because um, – like you said, we want to we want these people released to be a, a, a positive con- contributor to their society, and, and so how does this carry over to maybe a, a workable skill? Yeah, um, I'll piggyback on what Deborah was saying, just with the with the cover letter, uh, the communication, um, and, and she was talking a little bit about the other volunteer programs we have. So Toastmasters is is mm-hmm. one that that talks about public speaking. Uh, there's another creative writing group, Writing Your Resilience, that I work with through IU at Edinburgh. So it's a similar but mm-hmm. different type. And it's all talking about confidence, communication, public speaking, and, and that just it, it transcends creative writing once they get out because mm-hmm. they could be in front of a judge, they could be mm-hmm. in front of their sister, their family, uh, their employer. And so we can we can provide them, and we do, with, with all types of vocational skills and substance abuse programming and, and what, are your, mm-hmm. what kind of housing do you need? And we try to check all these boxes to set them up for success, um, but ultimately when it comes to executing, it, it's going to be them and maybe them alone, and so that's mm-hmm. where they need that empowerment of mm-hmm. I can speak, well, I can put words together. I can make my message clear and concise, and then and that just that pulls everything together. To just a well-rounded individual, right? And there's so much more to communication than talking, and that's mm-hmm. what I always tell people: it's reading, it's writing, it's understanding, it's listening, mm-hmm. and and you're improving all of those skills, and you're making them marketable, marketable in the real world. So, mm-hmm. do you have any success stories that somebody has used this in the real world that said came back and said, "Thank you, Deborah." Sure, um, sure. There's there's people that that have taken the workshop that we know are doing well, and they're still employed, mm-hmm. and they're speaking at different functions, at conferences, uh, or art shows, um, or other nonprofits who have fundraisers. Um, so yes, uh, we do know that that it's working, and that they are using those skills to to keep. Uh, focused, motivated, and to keep continuing to to feel that they're vital in the community mm-hmm. through opportunities is really the the key word. So they're given opportunities inside Indiana correctional facilities, and then on the outside, they're uh, we believe they're using what they've learned to to continue to succeed. 
So, so, so give, give people a snapshot of what this 12-week program sure. looks like. They walk right. in on day one. They walk uh, in on day one. They take a pre-eval so we know kind of where they're at, uh, what they hope to accomplish. Um, we jump in and give them writing prompts, um, whether it's, you know, write about a time uh, that you learned a lesson from a family member, write about a time you experienced loss. Um, and so they're really uh, becoming, refl- they're, being reflective as they write and then they turn in those assignments and we the volunteer facilitators uh provide them feedback on story flow could they have opened up uh, a little bit more in certain areas did they show more tell less typical things that that make an effective and good story we use the book imaginative writing to share with them uh character uh story development um setting uh imagery so different facets of writing um and then we share short stories with them uh, that they read in class uh from either incarcerated writers who have you know become very well-known uh, uh, New York Times best-selling authors uh, or literary greats like the ones I mentioned earlier on. And so it's about an hour and a half program uh, workshop. Um, it's 12 weeks. Um, some stay stay on longer. I know at Putnamville Correctional Facility, Tiffany has worked with the group now for about a year. Her background is, is elementary teaching, elementary school teaching, and then Christina at another facility has a background as, as a writer. And so they're all getting kind of trained uh, or trained feedback from from people who live and breathe writing. Mm-hmm. Well, and so is this a, a once a week? Do they come in once a week? Once a week is preferred. Um, yeah, right now, we're Christina's actually once a week at, at IYC, and then uh, uh, Tiffany's every other week. Now, Rick, if, if yeah. somebody in one of the corners of our state is mm-hmm. listening and they're like, hey, I'm intrigued by this. I, I, this is up my alley. I want to help. I, what what Can somebody volunteer to help with this program? Yeah, absolutely. This one directly, uh, there's definitely opportunities. I would I would connect them with Deborah, and if mm-hmm. they were thinking, well, I this made me think of this other skill I'm interested in, mm-hmm. or you know, I'm a, a yoga teacher, or you know, I do I have another way that I want to contribute, or I just want to be kind of part of the solution, and I want to help these mm-hmm. uh, returning citizens succeed. Uh, they can definitely come to me, and then I kind of quarterback and triage the interest and get them out to facilities. Mm-hmm. And you know, I I can understand some of the fears out there of, of anybody wanting to volunteer at the IDOC. Um, Deborah, kind of talk about the knock down some of those fears sure. because I think people would feel like they're walking through that door and they're going right. to be unsafe. And, and I would venture to guess you've probably never felt unsafe. Never felt unsafe at all. I think uh, working with each facility and the employees, they're very welcoming. You know what's expected. You know the, the rules and regulations. Uh, I feel comfortable um, even just walking the, the prison yard. The offenders are very respectful. Um, they know that having a volunteer come in is, is, you know, is an extra, right? And mm-hmm. so they treat volunteers very well um, myself and and the team that that I have um, and so you know it's just like I said it's a welcoming place um, I feel very equipped uh, through written materials that I've read and through uh, conversations with facility staff um, very comfortable yeah so Rick if somebody wants to volunteer at a prison do they find you on the website you think it's easiest yes yeah we uh, right on our DOC homepage there's a volunteer tab right there on the left and that'll give them a ton of information just kind of introductory information some overview and then there's contact information and they can reach out to us yeah and there's almost any I mean the opportunities are almost endless I would guess absolutely and so the first question I always get when I talk to folks about I oversee volunteers for the department I didn't know you could volunteer in prison what what can you do I'm glad you asked that right and then it just segues into anything out in the community anything that makes you a better individual we need that and may have that already in our prisons and we're always looking for volunteers to support that all right deborah we're closing out with about 40 seconds left is there anything else you want people to know about your program or or a short story you want to tell about the program um no i'm just you know real um energized uh to be able to empower like rick rick used um the word empowerment um it's very rewarding to volunteer with indiana department of correction you feel supported as well Mm -hmm. Um, As Rick said, you know, you can contact him if anyone wants to donate composition notebooks or pens. Our uh, facilities are always in need of those things. Um, And as I close, you know, I'll just 
end with uh, one of the writers said, you know, Indiana Prison Writers Workshop has been a sanctuary for my thoughts and it's had a calming uh, influence on my entire being. So we believe the, the Creative Writing Workshop is is another uh, avenue that, that's helping uh, rehabilitate uh, the men and women inside. Great. Well, thank you very much, uh, Rick and Deborah, for coming on. You've been listening to the Indiana State Police Roadshow brought to you by Indiana State Police Alliance and Cops for Kids. See you next week.